All right, guys, this is gonna be kind of weird, kind of strange, not our normal time together. But for a while, I've been promising you a look at my secret passion, my 1989 Batman collection. It feels a little weird to show this. No one's ever seen it before. It's like Alfred let Vicky Vale into the Batcave. I couldn't find every last thing because a few things are in storage. But behold, it is my secret stash of Batman. 1989 was a huge year for movies. Ghostbusters 2, Lethal Weapon 2, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, Back to the Future Part 2, Dead Poet Society, Rain Man, Honey I Shrunk the Kids, and even the first movie I ever saw in the theater. The Little Mermaid. But as big as each one of those movies was, nothing could even touch 1989's Batman. I was at a very impressionable age, six or seven years old, right in that sweet spot where I'm just becoming aware of the culture. I've got Ninja Turtles over here, I've got the Ghostbusters cartoon, and then all of a sudden everybody, everywhere, was talking about Batman. Actually, at that time, the old 1966 Adam West Batman was on TV in reruns, so all us kids were familiar with Batman, plus the Superpowers cartoon had been on. 89 was the 50th anniversary of Batman, so DC Comics had Batman everywhere, had Batman color forms. I mean, we knew what Batman was, but this movie was going to be something completely different. That bat symbol. That crazy, seemingly ultra simple piece of graphic art was everywhere from Times Square to billboards to bus advertisements. It was so mysterious and so hyped. There was controversy. It was almost like an internet movie, you know? They cast Michael Keaton as Batman and the fans were outraged, but there weren't even any message boards for people to get outraged on. It was just one of those movies that hit all those check boxes for, for nerds to come out and geeks over here and everybody getting excited. So much buzz, so much mystery. And then of course it turned out to be the biggest movie ever. What cooler movie could there possibly be for a six or seven year old kid to go and see but a Batman movie. Dude, people were so hyped up, they were actually taking their kids and buying tickets to movies they had no intention of watching just to watch the trailer for Batman and then leave the theater. It was coming out June 23rd, 1989, right during summer vacation, and I couldn't go see it. Too dark, they said. Too violent, they said. Too scary, they said. Oh, I can't see Batman. Of course, there were a couple of kids in my grade who did get to go see it. I don't know what their parents were thinking, but they got to see it and they bragged about it to everybody when we got back in school or when we were, you know, wherever kids were, yeah, we got to see Batman. Luckily, the Tim Burton, Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson Batman movie wasn't just breaking box office records because on November 15th, 1989, Batman was released on VHS less then six months after its release in the theaters, which was literally unheard of at the time. See, back in 1989, home video was still relatively new. New enough that maybe one out of every three people I knew had a VCR in their house. It definitely wasn't everybody. A lot of people were still going to video stores and actually renting the VCRs, the players for these old VHS tapes just to watch movies like every weekend or so. And the conventional wisdom was, you don't want to release the home video too soon after the movie is in the theater. Because they were thinking it might hurt the box office, it might hurt the ticket sales for actually going to see the movie in the theater, which believe it or not was still the big moneymaker at the time. But oh no, they defied conventional wisdom, put this bad boy out in November, and it sold like gangbusters. Wrap up the holidays with the perfect gift. Batman on video cassette, specially priced at stores everywhere. Now I may not have been allowed to go and see the actual movie in the movie theater, but you know what? My mom knew I loved Batman, and she also knew that I loved action figures. And so one glorious summer day, after looking through the newspaper ads, she said, Justin, let's go to Target. Why, Mom? I don't want to go to Target. Because the new Batman toys are out, and I am going to get you one. <laughs> I've never put my shoes on so fast. 
in my entire life. This was like the most exciting toy line to hit the shelves since the Ninja Turtles. Maybe it was even bigger, the movie was so huge. The 1989 Toy Biz Batman action figure line. I've never managed to find the old Target ads that we were looking at that morning, but I do have this 1989 JC Penny catalog, and here you can see a very similar advertisement. This was like opening day, rope drop for the toys. We got into Target, it was slam packed with people like, uh-oh. We didn't have a lot of money back then, man. We didn't get toys. I never owned a Power Wheels, you know, nothing like that. My dad and my mom both worked and they worked up from literally nothing, zero. So I think, you know, we had like a couple of Ghostbusters toys. I think I had a few Ninja Turtles. And that was a sign that we were moving up in the world, okay? That's just, just as my parents began to, to rise. So getting toys on a non-birthday or non-Christmas type trip to the store was a big deal. Now, I was a serious toy kid. I played with those toys like they were my best friends in the world. I didn't have a lot of little friends and playmates. I didn't play sports, I still don't. So getting hold of a Batman action figure was gonna be a big deal. Unfortunately, when we entered the store, took a right, got all the way to the end where the toys were in the Target on Lincoln Avenue in Anaheim, the one that's not there anymore, I'll never forget it. The pegs that held the figures of Batman were empty. No! No Batman! Oh darn, you know, I, was, I remember kind of being like, oh okay, I mean, that's fine, but my mom was probably more disappointed than me. You know, she'd, she'd gotten all excited. She wanted to get this thing for us. So of course she goes off and starts asking the people, like, do you have any in the back? That kind of thing. In the old days, they'd give you a rain check. I don't know if they still do that, a rain check, you know? Like, they'd give you a little slip of paper, you write your name on it, and then when it's in stock, they'd call you up on the phone and tell you, hey, this thing's coming back, and they'd hold one for you. So she goes and gets a rain check for Batman, and she comes back and she's looking, she's walking up and down the aisle, and she goes, you know what? You might not have Batman for a while, but how would you like a Batmobile? Underneath where all the action figures were, along the bottom row, along the bottom shelf, was a row of these Toy Biz Batmobiles. Now remember, we were not exactly flush with cash. We rarely, my brother and I, ever got to dip down into the vehicles section of the toys, okay? That was a Christmas present, a birthday present, or like you took all the money that all the grandparents and great-grandparents and aunts and uncles gave you, and maybe you bought that on your own after Christmas. But this was not a normal, like, go ahead, pick one out. And my mom grabbed one of these boxes from down there and then hesitated and said, you know what? And you need someone to drive the Batmobile and from the shelf, and I can't find mine right now, of course, the one in the package, she pulled down Robin. Dude, what the heck was even happening? My mom was so cool, she's gonna buy me a Batmobile and Robin? So we grabbed the stuff, she got the rain check for Batman, we went home, and I opened the box up to discover this. The coolest movie car, I would argue, of the 1980s, and maybe my favorite movie car of all time. Dude, this was awesome. This thing was so sleek, so stylish. Really my first encounter ever with graphic design. I loved the box. I loved the logo. I loved the character. And because I had Robin, I could already start playing Batman before I even had a Batman. Basically the storyline, because there was always a storyline when I played with toys. I should have wrote them all down. I could have been a movie writer, you know? The Batman was tied up back in Gotham City doing something, but Robin had brought the Batmobile here ahead and Batman would be on his way shortly. Dude, I loved this freaking toy. I still do, as you can tell. There were two versions. There was this regular version that just, oh wow. I didn't know it at the time, but there were actually two versions of this Batmobile. There's the regular one here, and then there was the sort of deluxe version, the one I got that included the cocoon. Cocoon, you say? Oh yes, just like in the movie, this Batmobile could suit up and armor up. This flimsy little piece of plastic right here was the cocoon. Very flexible. Like I said, very flimsy. You'll have to forgive, actually, this example. It's very dirty, very dinged up. I've had this particular cocoon here 
for decades. This is the one I sort of always kept up on the shelf and it's sort of gotten banged up. You can kind of see just how flimsy it actually is. It's almost like an extra piece of of packaging more than really like a plastic toy accessory. But that did not matter to me, dude. Batman's freaking cocoon! And there were other special features like the realistic turbine sound. Wow. And you'll notice here inside the cockpit, which never had a roof by the way, was a little lever. You lift this bad boy up, the little gun vents open, and it would fire out two little yellow missiles. Actually, I rarely ever do this, but what the heck, I'm gonna open up the cleaner example just to show you what I'm talking about here. Oh, gotta be so careful because of the, the cocoons in these things. It's in pretty good shape, but it's very, very fragile. Oh, there you go. There's a clean cocoon on that bad boy. Oh, nice. This one is missing the little cardboard that came in the box that was packed in, but I do have the original instructions, and most importantly, and most rarely, these two little spring-loaded yellow missiles that every kid lost. That's why I don't have them for that, the old beat-up one there. What you did was, you had to open up the little, the little bat vents, and then you very carefully jammed them down in there. And then if you pulled the lever up just a little bit, you could kind of get a peek at the little yellow missiles. But if you pulled it all the way, they would fire with what I must say is some considerable force. Check it out. Ooh. Oh, looks like only one of them fired. Well, we can let it go this time. It is 31 years old after all. Jeez Louise, how time flies. Look at this one still has the little stickers. Anyway, this instantly became pretty much my favorite toy Ever. And I mean, all I did was play with toys. Like I said, no sports, no friends, just playing with toys constantly with my brother, and the Batmobile was it. I didn't want Robin to be lonely, you know, so of course I begged my mom, and we went everywhere. We went to Mervyn's and JCPenney, Sears, and Toys R Us, always looking for Batman. We went back to Target. She must have filled out a dozen rain checks. Finally. One day, although there were no Batmen in stock, my mother surprised me by procuring the Joker. Dude, the freaking Joker! Look at that with his water squirting flower, his little purple fedora. This was next level. Dude, look at the back of this package. Because like I said, we couldn't get Batman still. I must have stared at the back of Robin's and especially Joker's package every day. I kept these card backs. I didn't even clip off the little, you know, information about the character. I kept it intact. And I obsessed over that picture right there. Dreaming of the day I'd get Batman. But in the meantime, the Joker was mine. The Joker entered the play arena. Robin finally had someone to fight. No longer was he up against Skeletor or someone. He finally had the appropriate adversary. Dude, look at that Joker. I should point out, actually, that there are two versions of the Joker. This one right here, the normal one. And this one with the tiny little lock of hair. It's just a little side note for you. My dad always loved to point out that you can actually put Joker into the working trunk of the Batmobile. You could actually fit him in there if you folded up his legs. Actually, you don't really need to fold up the legs much. And close the trunk for some reason. He thought that was hilarious. To make a long story short, after a lifetime of waiting, finally, after checking back, is there any in the back? Is there any in the back? What about my rain check? My mom managed to procure me the Holy Grail. Batman! Dude, I've seen and done some cool things in my life, but I still don't think I've ever been as excited, for any object anyway, as when I got this. Dude, look at it! Freaking Batman, are you kidding me? You have to remember, this is like the biggest movie of all time, certainly of my lifetime, to that point that I was cognizant of. You know, I was born in 83, so I missed all the Star Wars movies being in the theater. There were commercials constantly, especially during all the Saturday morning cartoons and after school cartoons. Just Batman, 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 showing the trailer. Where does he get those wonderful toys? I mean, there was, every kid was playing Batman on the playground and running around referencing the movie that I still hadn't seen, but I had this. The Toy Biz. Bat rope in the belt. Batman, dude. Look at this thing. There are a couple different versions. This one is, I think this one's called the Keaton head. There's a round head, a Keaton head, and then the more square headed one. And as tiny and I know insignificant looking as this is to six or seven year old me, however old I was, this was the coolest thing ever. He had a little cloth cape that blew in the wind and most importantly, 
his belt came out with a little rope, and Batman could do that. Guys, this was the coolest feature ever. He pulled out the bat rope, and Batman could fly off after the Joker. I mean, to kids that grew up with PlayStation, Xbox, I'm sure this is not very impressive. You're like, what? What is the point of that? But look at this. He had a little, a little thing that went back, kind of like a tape measure, and Batman could fly off after Vicky Vale to get the Joker. I can't even tell you. It was the coolest thing, like, ever, ever, ever. I obsessed over the back of this package. This little miniature water tower here, the little black gravel. I was like, where is that? I want that, you know? Of course, if you look really closely, Batman looks a lot different in the picture than he looks with the actual figure, you know? And that is because Toy Biz actually took Kenner's earlier Super Powers figure, painted it black, and just sort of had that stand in as the prototype. In fact, this Robin I've been showing you is actually a 1984 Super Powers Robin that they literally just copied for the 1989 Toy Biz line. So two completely different toy companies, and I don't know whether they had permission or what, but they basically just uh, ripped off a lot of the earlier Kenner stuff. But I didn't know that it was 1989, you know? I was, I was six or seven, I was really small. This was so freaking exciting. Somewhere in storage, I do actually have the Robin in the correct package over here but anyway I had Batman and of course I had the Joker I had Robin and eventually I got Bob the Joker's goon oh my gosh who who has seen the 89 Keaton Batman movie could forget Bob the Joker's loyal faithful goon you are my number one god Tracy Walter is the name of the actor supposedly he was a good friend of Jack Nicholson and that is why he's in the movie. You know, he offered him the part. I need this guy as my right hand man. He did a fantastic job. I thought that Jack Nicholson as the Joker was made a lot more believable by Bob, the goon who had been loyal to him when he was just a regular mafia type guy, you know, sticking with him in his insanity. There was one guy to whom the craziness made sense. And then of course, Joker at the end unceremoniously kills Bob. Spoiler alert. Yeah, but Bob is always one of my absolute favorite characters. He had a kicking action, so if you take him out of the package, his little leg, there's a little lever on the back, and his little leg will kick straight up in the air. He has a gun, just a straight up gun right there. Look at that. Bob's got a straight gat, and uh, he's got a freaking knife right there, like a big old knife, just like he does in the movie. And a little fedora to cover his bald head. This was one of my favorite figures ever, 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 and I buried him in the backyard over there on Broadway in Anaheim. And I could never find him again. I actually keep this one right next to my desk in the other room. Like, just whenever I'm doing the Patreon podcast or I'm editing something, I always look over and I'm like, heck yeah, dude, Bob the Goon. Anyway, that Christmas was all Batman. I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but I got Bob the Goon. My brother got the Riddler figure whose accessory was a little piece of paper with riddles printed on Can't it. Can't make that stuff up. Later, I would get this. I never had this as a kid, but there was a Two-Face figure here who you could... You could wind up a little thing and the coin would spin around. And the weird thing is they clearly just took a real dime and and molded a real dime into his hand. Like, seemed kind of lazy. And this one's in sort of bad shape, but they had a Mr. Freeze here. You can see on the back, you can see the, the penguin, right? You can see him right there, the penguin, which is another superpowers ripoff. I think all of these were actually ripped off of the Kenner superpowers molds from five years earlier. They were just in new packages and stuff. There's Superman, Wonder Woman, Lex Luthor. In fact, when these disappeared from the shelves, for years afterwards in KB Toys, I remember there was a store called Best. Anyone remember that? Not Best Buy, just Best. But for years afterwards, they called them peg warmers. There'd be these leftover figures long after all these were gone. I'd catch a hint of that gold colored packaging and be like, oh my gosh, an old school rope Batman. And it would be this guy. Lex Luthor with punch himself in the head action. What the heck? That same Christmas, I also got the other most epic vehicle ever, the 1989 Toy Biz Batwing. I mean, one of the coolest toys I have ever owned. I had a little, a little trigger on it that closed the claws to steal the balloons or grab the Joker. I had one pristine perfect in the box just like this, but when my son was little, I let him play with all of my Toy Biz Batman collection. Well, at least the parts that I hadn't already sold off. And uh, unfortunately, we lost the box. And the little bat uh, wings, the little fins that stuck up right here are long gone. But he actually recovered this for me from his mom's house not too long ago. And look at this. 
the little trigger on here still works, still closes the little bat scissors, and you can still, to this day, grab Joker and fly off with him. Uh, someday I'll have to get another one, you know, with the box and everything still. But for the moment, I was actually really surprised just to ever see this again. It used to shoot little red suction cup darts in there, and there were little fins on the back. But I mean, this was a cool toy. I mean, I always loved the, the little trigger on it because you could sort of fly it, like follow behind it like it's a... Like it's an X-Wing or something. You know what I'm talking about, where you put your head behind the toy and you're flying around and you're going to get the Joker, you know, POV style. Anyway, in addition to that, I had the Bat Cycle we picked up years later in some discount rack. I believe there was a Joker Cycle with a sidecar. In fact, I know there was, but I never had it. And there was also, I had no idea as a kid, not until eBay came along, years later did I ever know, there was a Toy Biz Joker van. They would later repaint it and uh, do a Punisher van, I think, with it, which I just saw on an estate sale and should have bought because they're really expensive on the internet. But anyway, I did find a Toy Biz van years ago, a Joker van, which I actually gave to London when he was about two or three because the Joker was his very favorite character. I mean, he loved that, dude. Those Imagine X Batman toys. He played with the Joker all the time. And again, he was going through the garage or somewhere and he found this, so I've still got it. He just brought this over to me now. There's a little button, I think, that fell in or got lost. And the reason there was a button is because this also could squirt water out of the Joker's mouth, just like he had a little thing where he could squirt water out of this. A lot of water squirting going on in the 80s. And uh, the back door is open, the side door is open. I actually do have the windshield sitting right here. So I've kind of got to put this put this bad boy back together, I guess. Never found it in the box. But anyway, aside from all this, they had some kind of crazy movie scene projector. They had a little Batman costume kit, which, I don't know, we never got that as kids. And they had the remote control Batmobile, which I just showed you guys the other day in the parking lot when we were testing those remote control Batmobiles out. No! I never had this either when I was small, because my dad said, like, dude, you got the big you know, the one you can fit the figures in, you don't really need that thing. It's got a wire, you'll be bored of it in two seconds. He was right. He was right. Yeah! So there's still a lot of the Toy Biz stuff that I haven't managed to get. I did manage to get hold of the Batcave. That's another thing. I desperately wanted the Toy Biz Batcave. I mean, look at it on the back of the card. The Holy Grail, but this thing was like, I think 50 bucks, maybe? Which in the 80s, dude, that was a lot of money back then. And I remember my dad told me, he's like, look, it's just flimsy plastic, which I had no idea what he meant, and cardboard. And I looked at it, and I think it'll break in three seconds. And again, my dad was right, because years later, I got one in the box and everything. I opened it up, and it's basically a car cardboard on one side and this really thin plastic shell on the other and all the parts don't really fit very well. I mean, it's pretty cheaply made, and I would have definitely, as a kid, destroyed it in about 30 seconds flat. So, good call again, Dad. Probably 10, 15 years ago, I sold the most of it off. I didn't have a penny to my name. And so, over the years, as I've seen stuff for really cheap, you know, I've bought it back. And uh, you can pick this stuff up for really cheap for a long time there. I mean, you could find one of these still for like $25. I'm talking like 2012, 13. For 20 bucks, you'd find another Batman Batmobile in the box and all that kind of stuff. Joker van, the Joker cycle, those were always kind of hard to find, still very hard to find in the box. There was an Australian eight inch, almost Mego looking figure in a similar packaging that I never had. Those are hard to find, I've still never managed to get those, but someday, someday I'll complete it. I'm always looking for bargains. For whatever reason, the prices have just gone up super insane on this stuff lately. Anyway, okay, so there's the toys and I jumped ahead a little with that Christmas, but before that happened, and probably right around the same time, I got that Batman figure. That record-breaking, ground-breaking, I believe highest grossing ever video release, the Batman VHS was happening. And I can remember in October, just before Halloween, I, was stand I went into Costco with my parents and right at the entryway to Costco, and we didn't have a Costco membership, so I don't know how we got in there. Right in the entryway, right when you walked in, in Fullerton, I believe, that one, was this display with these TVs, those old school TVs on it, and the Batman VHS was playing. Not just the, tra I thought it was the trailer, I'm looking, you know, like the commercials that were always on. No, no, no. This was the movie. And right next to the TV screens was a cardboard cutout, the top half of this that you see here. Just this top half, and then there was this weird, like, box that came out. I kind of to create a shelf, something like you'd see in an AM, PM or something, and filling it were copies of the VHS, or so I thought. Remember, we're talking about October now, so they were actually just empty cases. I think they were glued down in there or something, but it was basically like November 15th, get Batman. Keep in mind, I had not been allowed to see this in the theater. So 
I beg, I was still pretty little, and I was like, can I just please stand here? And I stood there and watched so much Batman. I think it was the scenes with the Batwing, actually, with the parade, the balloons, the Batwing swooping down. And I'm like, my mind is blown. My mind is blown. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. And okay, in 2020, you can find lots of reviews and podcasts online where people are talking about how corny the movie is. Oh, this scene or that scene, the Prince music. To a six or seven year old kid in 1989, and my grandfather had just passed away, so the first great tragedy of my life and all that, you know, and our whole family, everyone was kind of down in the mouth. So these Batman figures were like one of the few things that was like, you know, something to hold on to. Maybe that's why this movie's like permanently become so important to me. I don't know. But there I was just before Halloween, that October smell in the air, and I am watching the most serious, dark, intense movie of ever. There's the Joker, and he's like, nah, he's so gnarly, completely different than the TV show. I mean, this was it. And so, of course, as you can imagine, all I did was beg to see this movie. When it comes out, we got to see this movie. We had just gotten our first VCR. I had to see this movie. I had to see this movie. I still don't remember how it happened. It happened one of two ways, because we lived next door to these girls who were like sisters to us. So I should probably get a hold of them. I haven't seen them in 15, 20 years or something. Either they got it, the first day, right? And they had it over at their house and their mom was kind of watching us and we could go back and forth because we were right next to each other. And this, oh, it's hard to explain, but we go back and forth to each other's houses and we went over to my house and watched it. Or, and I think this is the more likely version, or my dad had got it and rented it to watch, to see if we could watch it, to see, you know, if there were parts he could fast forward through or how it was gonna be. And then just ended up letting me watch it with him. Which is, I think, what happened. I'm pretty confident, actually. Now, I don't want to throw my dad under the bus, but I remember watching it in that living room, and it was, like, right when it came out, because when I went to school, then I was the cool kid to the other kids that weren't allowed to watch it. You know, like, oh, and the other kids at church, like, you were allowed to watch that? Heck, yes, I wasn't. It was the coolest movie ever. Everything from the music, the score, Danny Elfman, just the darkness of it. I mean, Batman was so serious. I mean, this was like a life or death serious movie to me. This movie became gospel. It's one of those things I'm sure they were thinking, should we be letting him watch this movie, you know? And I, and I but I, I obsessed over it so hard. I played with the toys so hard. I loved it so hard that I'm pretty sure that Christmas we got our own copy of it and it was like I was allowed to watch this movie and this was like the one like adult movie <laughs> Well, not adult movie, but you know what I mean. Grown-up movie that I was allowed to watch, and I devoured this religiously. To this day, if I see a copy of this VHS tape anywhere, I must purchase it. Look at this. I got the quick video rental version with this, this cool Batman sticker on it. I got one of the weird squeeze and, and shake cases where you got to kind of uh, droop it out there. This one actually has a screen printed or... I forget what kind of printing that's called, but this little printed thing on there instead of the sticker, weird. I mean, I don't run into them all that often, you know, but when I do, I must, like, I must purchase it. Thrift store, garage sale, whatever it is. Anyone who grew up in the Batman VHS era remembers there were two commercials at the beginning of this VHS. Two commercials that are burned into my brain forever. In the first commercial, we see the Batmobile taking off. Alfred is calling the Gotham Corner Store. He says, we seem to be down to our last Diet Coke. And he says, a gentleman in a black car is on his way to pick some up. No, this black car is quite uh, unique or distinctive, whatever he says. I forget now. And then it ends with that jingle still burned into my brain. Just for the taste of it. <sighs> Diet Coke. And then the Warner Brothers logo hit the screen. You think the movie's about to start? And then Daffy Duck, of all people, or ducks, comes along and goes, hold it, hold it. Let's see if you're really ready to watch this movie. And then busts out a checklist. You got your popcorn, soft drink, Warner Brothers ball cap. Aha, you can't watch a Warner Brothers movie without a Warner Brothers ball cap. And then Bugs Bunny shows up. Wait a minute, Doc. But if they order the Warner Brothers ball cap so they have it next time. Plot twist, the whole thing is a commercial for the Warner Brothers catalog. It's all in the catalog. Well, it took me 31 years, but I finally found a copy of the 1989 Warner Brothers catalog. Look at all this stuff, dude, all the Looney Tunes. And then look at that, <gasps> Batman. Look at the Batmobile, the Bat Bike. Sure never had that Joker's laughing ball, the beanie. Look at all the stuff in here, the costumes. Oh, I wanted this so bad. I wanted it so bad, but it was 300 bucks. I don't know what 1989, $300 is worth now. 
but a lot. Look at this. They got the body towel. They got the calendar, lapel pins, cups, playing cards, Joker Jack in the box, this clock radio that's still really expensive, Batman sculpture, coins. I mean, there's... Look at all this stuff. Bob Kane wearing a freaking Joker jacket. I want that Joker jacket so bad, man. Look at... What, 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 what? We're in the lethal weapon territory. We gotta go back. Look at all this stuff. And there was more than one, so of course... I had to find the other one too. Look at Batman right in the middle there. I think this is actually the spring and summer one. I think this one came first. Look, you could order Kirk Cameron. You could order this lady's bedazzled jacket. Let's see, where's the Warner Brothers stuff at? Oh, freaking Alf inflatable Gumby. Wow, look at this catalog. Good thing I never had it. I would have been like, I want everything. I want it all. Where's Batman? I know he's in here. Come on, let's go. Let's find him. Look, dude, this is some... Some weird stuff, some memories right here. Oh yeah, look at this. Check this out, look at that. Look at the Bat Cycle outfit. Whoa, that lady is looking good. And then there's this bedazzled rhinestone Batman jacket. You still see this uh, popping up on eBay from time to time for like 500 bucks. Definitely not a collector's item that increased in value because it's 500 bucks in this catalog. 500 bucks in 1989. Boy, oh boy, money must have been flowing in the Reagan years. Not for us, but for other people. There's Bob Kane again. Look at it. There's that bad cave I was talking about. It was all plastic on this side. It was all nice and solid. The other side was just a sheet of cardboard. The early prototype for the Batmobile I was just showing you. There's the Batwing. I mean, this stuff is awesome. I wish I had it all. That's not all. Apparently there was another little miniature catalog. I don't know if this came with VHSs or what. Mostly it's got the same sort of stuff in it. This one unfolds. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Basically the same type of stuff. Look at that. There's a flag. There's a mobile. You got the toys over here. Free miniature Batmobile! Man, I can't get over that Bat Cycle outfit. I gotta find one of those. Well, one funny thing I noticed in the commercial at the beginning of the VHS recently I looked a little closer. The number you called to get the catalog was a 1-900 number. And if you look closely, it says it costs a dollar fifty per minute. One fifty per minute will be added to your phone bill. In 1989, that was quite a chunk of change. Uh, please hold while we connect you to the catalog operator. That'll be five minutes, don't worry. Fifteen minutes later. Good thing I never called. My mom would have been... Mad. So, from that era, I've got all those Batman toys that you saw. I have a few others in storage, some of the loose ones. I've got the Riddler stashed away somewhere, Robin somewhere in the package. I couldn't get a hold of those today quickly enough. It took me years to find it at a decent price, but eventually I found the cardboard cutout, the stand up version of Batman. I mean, I heard a lot of people were complaining that Keaton wasn't tall enough to play Batman when the movie came out, but. I didn't think he was this small. It's got the old school Star Makers logo on the bottom. That was like a crazy day when I managed to get hold of that. And then long afterwards, I found the Jack Nicholson Joker cardboard stand-up to go along with it as well in addition to... Dude, I love this thing. When I first got it and the other one, I set them up in the house. I had them up in here like every day. I kept putting them like in the shower, out open the door. Ah! I mean, come on. That is Bangarang, or actually that's Batarang. Another crazy thing that was going down for kids in 1989 was the Batman cereal. Oh, that's right. Ralston, which I'm not sure even exists anymore, made the Batman cereal. Look at it, a bunch of little bats in a bowl. There were exciting commercials for this stuff. My family hadn't really reached brand name cereal level, you know, yet. It was very, every once in a while we got some Captain Crunch, I think, because my dad really liked it and stuff. But this, he was like, oh, you don't want that. It's not very good. It's the same cereal they make for every movie. And he was right again, by the way. What Ralston would do back then is they'd do like a Ghostbuster cereal, and then they'd do a Batman cereal. Whatever movie was coming out, they would do the cereal. And it was exactly the same flavor every time. Natural honey nut flavor. I think eventually I convinced my grandma, or maybe my nana, my other grandma, to get me the Batman cereal. And I tasted it, my first sweet sip of cereal, and I was like, oh, this isn't very good. It's like those other crappy cereals, and my, my dad was right again. The taste buds be darned, man. It was so cool to have Batman cereal. And this is in the heyday of sweet prizes and sweet free stuff in your cereal and mail-away stuff. And, of course, the most famous Batman cereal object was this Batman Banks hill. <laughs> Stickers on his face. You can find these. You see these things in thrift shops. You see these things everywhere. There are Batman banks everywhere. So, of course, I have this sealed Batman cereal still shrink wrapped. There is still cereal inside of it, and I planned 
on opening it up and actually eating the cereal. Oh, that's right, 31-year-old cereal. I was gonna eat it just for your viewing pleasure when I noticed the first ingredient right there. Can you see it? Wheat! Oh no! Batman, you're not gluten-free! Now maybe it's a little overboard, but over the years, I've gotten quite a few of these Batman cereal boxes. As you can see, here's one with a free Batman mail-away hologram t-shirt. Here's one with a free glow-in-the-dark frisbee. And there was more. There was another box where you could get three proofs of purchase and mail away for a free little miniature Batmobile. I don't know if that one came in or if you mailed away. I think it was a mail away. And uh, I actually have that Batmobile somewhere, but I don't have that cereal box to go with it. And then there was another one where you could mail away and get a free Batman kite. Which I actually have the store version of here, the six and a half foot octopus kite. The bag is in really rough shape. Whoever had this before me let it get really dirty and kind of faded away. The one that came from Mail Away with the cereal didn't have this bag, which you can see this one's just, just the black is totally run all over this thing. So someday I hope to get the actual cereal Mail Away version and then I'll, I'll take this out and actually fly it because it's still intact in there. The coolest thing I ever found, and it took me a long time to find it, was I actually tracked down the free glow in the dark Batman Flyer! Look at that, with purchase plus 50% postage and handling, the free glow-in-the-dark Batman Frisbee and it still glows. All right, look at this. I don't even need to turn the lights off. I just shine a black light flashlight on it and you can see there, look at that. It still freaking works. I put this up in my room uh, and I have this little black light flashlight next to my bed and I'll shine it up there and just look at the bat signal in the dark. Poor Allie. Actually, what am I saying? She actually likes it. The one that I've never managed to find. Well, there's another one that has like some offer or like a discount for that ride on Batmobile, which I'm not, I'm not getting that. But the one that really got away was this free Batman hologram t-shirt. I have never seen one of these on eBay, on Etsy, at a flea market, at a thrift store. And I have looked like crazy for that. I just want to be as cool as this kid. Look at that kid. Come on! Now none of these have the cereal in them except for the bank one. So you can actually just fold these things back up and they're easy to store and all that stuff. But I, I think each one of these I picked up for like one or two dollars, you know. All this stuff here, you'll notice a lot of it. Kind of beat up, kind of raggedy. And that's because, you know, I'm not going to spend a lot of money on this stuff. But just bit by bit over the last 10, 15 years, I built back up the Toy Viz collection. Like I said, I can never pass one of these. But I used to have a lot more before divorce and all that stuff. I don't know what happened to the rest, but I, I always have to pick these up. And these are always like for 99 cents in the thrift store or something like that. In addition to the Warner Brothers catalog and the JCPenney and the Toys R Us catalog I showed you earlier, I managed to come across quite a few magazines from the time period. Check out aisle magazines were also not really in the cards for us back in the day in my family. It was another, you know, you couldn't go crazy buying all this stuff even though I wanted to. This one I think might be one of them's from overseas, and there's some kind of racy photos in it, actually, of from other movies. But this one's the, the Souvenir Magazine, of course. Oh, my favorite, though, is the holiday issue, 1989, of the Blockbuster Video Magazine. Oh, that's right. Look at that. The Joker's wild! This one is weird because on one side is the Blockbuster Magazine, a little article about Batman, and then if you flip it over this weird way, the reverse side is the gift catalog. Look how expensive... Some of the movies were back then. Granted, Gone with the Wind is a long one, a lot of taste, but look, I mean, look, 20 bucks. That was a lot of money. That's a lot more money than 20 bucks is now. Some of them are 30, 40, 50 bucks. Insane! But yes, Blockbuster had their own magazine, and I've got the holiday issue. Something else I had never seen as a kid, but I managed to find not one, but actually two of, is this gigantic Batman poster book. Dude, this thing is awesome. They're, they're perforated, so you can actually pull each one of these posters out and put it in your room. They're not double-sided. Look at that. Like awesome pictures of the Joker, Batman, the Batmobile in here. Vicky Vale, wow, love that Joker. I mean, that is, that is awesome. The second one I have still in the shrink wrap, but I had to cut it because shrink wrap sometimes over the years can get really tight, so it was bowing the whole thing and kind of ruining it like an old LP, so I had to cut it open. And then of course, there were the soundtracks. Soundtracks, because there was the Danny Elfman score album, and then there was this, the Prince companion sort of concept album. It's all, all the Prince songs and some more that were in the movie, and uh, you remember that old Prince music video? 
that was a sight. And so I've got the, the Prince copy here because it goes right with the VHS. Good old cassette tape. Someday I'll have to get the Danny Elfman one. That cover's got like the bat wing in front of the moon or something. And then, look at this. I never had this until very, very recently. I caught this. A good old thrift store find. It's the novelization. Look at that. They also had some movie tie-in comic books that I've never managed to get. Which actually, I think there's a cereal box that has some mail-away comics, and there's some different mail-away comics. So there's plenty of crazy collectibles from 89 that I don't have. There you go. Got one of the old posters. Somewhere in a tube, I have just a giant Batman logo from 1989 that was for the video stores, you know? There's also a hanging mobile. I don't have it, but there's a cardboard hanging mobile that was in the video stores. I've never managed to find the aisle displays, you know, for the Toy Biz toys, or that video display version of the cardboard stand-up. Someday, I hope to get them. And I mean, of course, there's all kinds of stuff. There's old, you know, trucker hats and there's jackets. I actually have one 89 Batman jacket somewhere my friend Ben found for me. I had bat pajamas back then. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. So it's 1989 Batman. That's the one thing. If I come across some discount store or antique store, there's something and it's a, it's a decent price. I'm like, all right, I'll throw it in. I'll throw it in. Now, I know lots of people collect lots of things and surely there are a lot finer Batman collections out there than my meager fare here. But unlike anything else I've ever collected, which I've collected different stuff over the years, and then I always collect it, I get a lot of it, get it all there, and then I, I usually sell it off, and then that starts a new collection or something, right? Because the idea isn't to have all the toys in the world, it's to play with all the toys. I'll play with them, because, you know, they stay in the package, some of these. I don't know, something about Batman was just personal. It's, it's way more personal to me. Like I said, the first time I ever saw it was in that Costco right around Halloween time advertising for the November release. So back when I could eat gluten, my tradition was every Halloween for years, I would go to McDonald's, I'd get the, the Happy Meal bucket, right? Those old buckets with the ghosty face, that was my favorite one. And I would watch Batman. Still to this day, I still watch Batman every Halloween. Part of that is because that's when, you know, I first saw any part of that movie. That's around the time I I think I got the Batman action figure. I had a Batman Halloween costume. I mean, it was a Halloween movie to me. And plus, I think what makes this particular movie so special, the Tim Burton version, is that really it's like an homage to a lot of horror movies. You have the whole Phantom of the Opera ending thing there. You, It's just built up and filmed like a horror movie. That's what made Batman so dark. That's what made the whole thing, like an old Hammer horror movie or something like that. I mean, some people disagree with me, but I feel like I see a lot of you know, visual cues that remind me of old universal horror movies and I don't know, there's something very Halloweenish about it. You know, on, on top of the fact that there's a, a guy in a, a costume. Anyway, I had it all. The Batwing, the Batmobile, several Batman rope toys back in the day. And then I had nothing. Not because I got rid of any of this stuff. Oh, no, no, no. Because 1989 Toy Biz had the rights to produce the Batman toys. These weird sort of strains. I gotta be honest, now as an adult, I see they're a little cheaply made. Flimsy cocoons and whatnot. But if you'll recall, it was very difficult for us to get the actual Batman figure, and that is because they could not, they, was, they were basically a new company, it was a new thing for them to have this big hit movie and produce the toys, and they just could not produce the quality that the uh, folks with the Batman licenses were looking for, and they couldn't produce the quantity, like, you know, these things sold out everywhere. Well, except old punchy head Lex Luthor. And so, Toy Biz lost the license to make Batman action figures and just after Christmas 89, so sometime in 1990, Kenner started producing Batman action figures. I'll never forget it. The toy commercial said, it's Batman like you've never seen him before. And they were right. Look at them side by side here. The Toy Biz one is very lightweight. It's hollow. The Kenner one was rock solid. He couldn't bend his knees. He didn't have a pull-out bat rope. But he sure looked a lot more like Michael Keaton. It was Batman, the Dark Knight Collection. Oh, they took things up a notch. I will always love this package here. It was my first real true appreciation for graphic design. I always wanted to design toy packages, actually, for years because of this. But imagine now, you're a seven-year-old. You've seen the movie. You've now seen Michael Keaton's face all over it. You're really into it. The dark, just the epic, like, serious feeling movie to a seven-year-old. And all of a sudden in the toy stores, this gets replaced by this? 
Dude, what the heck? Look at the package. Look at that picture of Batman on there. Look at that. The Dark Knight collection had arrived. Oh, a whole bunch of different Batman in different bat suits. You've got Tech Shield Batman. Iron Winch Batman with those cool comic book colors. Wall Scaler Batman, another blue batty. Then they had Thunder Whip Batman here with a little weird wheel on his back so you could whip stuff, shadow wing Batman with that extendable cape. I don't have old Thunder Whip in the package and I don't have Power Wing Batman, that's the one other one. Then you had your classic black crime attack Batman, which I also don't have in the package yet. Now for years after this, for Batman Returns, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, the animated series, every other Batman thing that ever happened throughout the rest of the 90s, there was like 80,000 different versions of Batman and then like, you know, barely any enemies. It became kind of a running gag. People like, oh, Batman, they made a red Batman. You gotta buy that, a blue Batman. Well, it's true, you loved Batman. He, you had to have all the suits. But this was the first one. This was the first time they had ever done it. It was a new concept, it was exciting. And in addition to having all these crazy bat suits, they also had a brand new Joker. And just like Batman finally looked like Michael Keaton, this time you had a Jack Nicholson Joker. I mean, this was exciting stuff. This was big stuff. Can you stop it with the ball, Frankie? His face changed color if you dipped him in ice water. He had that long pistol that he shot down the bat wing with. A crazy little helicopter. Just look at that side by side with the Toy Biz version. I mean, one of those looks a lot more like Jack Nicholson, just saying. Now that Joker, in the package like that, is actually very, eh, reasonably difficult to find, especially for a decent price, They're kind of pricey, but even harder to find, was the second Joker that they made. Oh yes, they made a second Joker. This one is sort of shrink wrapped to this card that it got shipped to me in. I'm like afraid to take it out because this one, was a doozy to even find in the package at all. Knockout Joker, dude. He has some crazy shoulder pads going on there, but what can we say, it was the 90s. Now, unlike the Toy Biz ones where, you know, I still have a lot of stuff to get, I have almost every single one of these. I'm missing Power Wing, Thunder Whip, and Crime Attack in the package. I do have a Crime Attack in the package, actually, somewhere in the store, it's kind of messed up. It's a little, eh, it's a little bent. But other than that, I have got them all. The Dark Knight Collection, Wave 1 and 2, figures here, all the Batmans, including, and by the way, they're not in the best condition. Some of them are scraped up, a little bent up, because like I said, I don't spend millions of dollars on these. You go on eBay, you'll see a lot of these are quite pricey. I did not buy them at those type of prices, let's just put it that way, but uh, including this guy, dude, the quick change Batman. This was a favorite of my brother's, actually, and I gotta say, he looked a little funky when you got all the clothes on him. I mean, with the, with the gear on, his head looked Pretty, pretty large. But this was a full-on Michael Keaton action figure. I mean, now you could actually play with Bruce Wayne. That was new, dude. That was different right there. Freaking, you could put on the clothes like da 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 da. Gotta make, it, gotta make a change. I gotta tell you, these new Batman figures were awesome. I can remember going to Toy City in Anaheim over there, right on the. I think it was in Buena Park over there, right behind Western High School. Just seeing the whole shelf around Christmas time full of Dark Knight collection stuff like this. The Joker cycle. I don't have the Bat cycle. There is a Bat cycle. That one is uh, basically, I think they took RoboCop's motorcycle and they took the old 1984 Bat Copter from Superpowers and redid it. This was a Silverhawks jet. They made a Bat jet. I don't have either of these. I don't even think I have the Bat cycle, but I do have ye olde Joker cycle in the box. All of this was awesome, man. The changes were great. The new figures were exciting, they were awesome, they gave you more Batman to collect. But the biggest change, because my favorite toy through all this time, even with the Ninja Turtles, the party wagon, the Technodrome, all the crazy other 80s toys that were going on at the time, my favorite toy was this Batmobile with realistic turbine sound, that trunk back there, you know, the little firing missiles, Batman and Robin sitting in there, speeding off to save the day. And those crazy cats at Kenner, in addition to switching up Batman and making this sonic neutralizer, which is actually a Stormtrooper blaster and some other stuff, there was a dress up set and a bunch of stuff I never had. Those maniacs came up with their own Batmobile. Oh, that's right. My Batmobile had become obsolete because now there was the Dark Knight Collection Batmobile. Holy moly. I don't open this up very often, but I've got to do it. Kenner Dark Knight Collection Batmobile. You would think I've already got a Batmobile, but this 
This was a whole new story. Keep in mind, I'm only seven or eight now, and this was like mind-blowingly intense. This thing was heavier, lower, sleeker. It looked a lot more screen accurate in the sculpt somehow, and it especially went up a notch in accuracy with a closed canopy. And instead of the little yellow missiles in here, this Batmobile got full on Mush that, 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 there they are. Machine guns! It didn't make a realistic turbine sound anymore, but it did get pop out flames that spin while it drives. I know it's kind of hard to see spinning flames! Now instead of locking Joker in the trunk, you could just burn him to a crisp! The only weird feature that I really didn't like is that front thingy there became a missile, which meant you had this big button. Also meant this was very easy to lose and then mess up the whole look of your, uh, Batmobile, because let's face it, nobody wants that. Dude, look at that cockpit. The bat-shaped seat. It's so hard to show you, but it had a much more screen-accurate steering wheel versus the sort of clunky Toy Biz one. It had a lot more realistic sort of detailing on it than this one did. No weird stickers on the side. The only drawback is that it was only a one-seater, right? Batman had to go this one alone, leave Robin behind. But since there's no Robin in the movie, and they never made a Vicky Vale figure, Ah, that was okay. This thing was awesome. I love the Toy Biz version. Of course, my first love with the Dark Knight Collection Batmobile. That was serious, serious business. This was a grown-up's Batman toy, let me tell you. Now here endeth my toy collection. They came out with a turbojet Batwing that I never had, a much more detailed, crazy Batwing. Those are really expensive. I'm trying to get them all in the box. The box doesn't have to be sealed because I'll, otherwise I'll pull them out, but the turbojet Batwing is pricey. I mean, expensive. So I've never managed to get a hold of one of those. It took me forever, actually, to get a hold of this in the box. And I mean, it's pretty dinged up and banged up, but I got it. After the Dark Knight collection, of course, right on the heels of it actually, came the Batman Returns line with a lot of the reused figures. Batman looked pretty much exactly the same. I've got a couple of the ones I had as a kid that I found again in a state sale. Like you got your little scuba Batman, there was an arctic Batman that had a little bubble top, but you also had the same Batman lifted up his wings. Frankie, your cat hair! Another version of the quick-changing Bruce Wayne. And something I will regret forever, letting slip through my fingers, because I had it for a long time, the Bat Missile Batmobile. So they made another Batmobile just like this, but it was a little wider, a little bigger, because the sides split off, just like in Batman Returns, and so you just had a central vehicle, that Bat Missile Batmobile. Very difficult to find nowadays, in the box especially. Someday I would like to get it. Someday, if I complete the Dark Knight collection, you know, if I can ever get that Batwing and stuff, maybe I'll have to go on to Batman Returns and stop there. Had the Bat Missile Batmobile, it was awesome. But at a certain point, we would not clean up our room and all our toys had to get thrown out. We had to start all over. The one thing I did keep was the Batmobile. The Batmobile I kept, but the Bat Missile Batmobile was gone. And then, you know, you grow up, your toys go here, they go there, you lose all of your things. I actually found one of these in a trash can one time. I saw it sitting on top of the <gasps> Toy Biz Batmobile. Like I said, I collected stuff over the years, then I'd let it go, then I'd start to get some again, then something bad would happen and I'd let it go. You know, I have no problem letting it go. But I can remember, I was so bummed that I had got rid of this, because I made a mistake there. I actually, I got rid of this, I kept the Bat Missile one, or I kept the Toy Biz one, but I had gotten rid of the awesome Kenner Dark Knight Collection Batmobile. And then years later, in the sort of discount shelf, the clearance shelf at Toys R Us, I noticed they actually were selling the same Batmobile in a Batman Returns package, but covered with camo. And including, look at that, bonus Batman figure. Camo Batman! I actually grabbed one of those at an estate sale too. Just the camo attack Batman himself, sans Batmobile. But I saw this in a toy store when I was you know, too old to be buying toys, honestly, after that. I was just getting, I was in those weird teenage years where you're like, I don't play with toys, toys are lame. But even then, I was like, man, maybe I should get that. It was on clearance, I think it was $9.99. I was like, it's like my old Batmobile, you know, it's perfect. It's the exact same one, the pop-out flames and, and everything. But it had this weird camo on it, and I was like, Nah, what am I gonna do with it? And I let it go, and I regretted it forever. I tell people about this all the time. Dude, there's a camo attack Batmobile. They just took the Batman Batmobile, and they put it in a returns package, and they covered up with a bunch of camo, and I let it slip through my thing. And finally, after years, I randomly came across one of these on eBay, and all it said in the description was Batmobile. 
It was super cheap. And I snagged it. And I held on to it, even though I haven't bought any figures from Batman Returns or anything. I'm not there yet, you know, Dark Knight Collection first, I guess. I was like, I love this Batmobile. I love this Batmobile. As you can tell, I've got several uh, Toy Biz versions over there. I bought the Dark Knight Collection one, and I, I just, I had to grab this. So Bat Missile Batmobile, like that uh, Batwing. So expensive, man. Out of, out of my range. You see those? Dude, they're going up because a couple years ago, these were like 200 bucks each in the box, you know, if you were paying full price for them. They were pricey. And I don't know if anyone's paying it, but lately I've seen this one go for like seven or 800 bucks. Not in this condition, you know, like in perfect sealed condition or whatever, but that's a lot of money. I don't know if I'll ever be able to complete the collection, but it's kind of fun thinking like, oh, maybe one day I'll run across it. Anyway, I found out that in addition to doing the Bat Missile Batmobile for Batman Returns, they also did a tiny limited run in the very beginning of the Kenner, the normal Batmobile. This one, the Dark Knight Collection one, and they just put it in a new box. Now remember, they had won the license after 1989. Toy Biz had it. Kenner didn't get it until 1990. By 1991, they were already trying to sell Batman Return stuff. So I'm thinking they were still making these when Batman Returns came along and they just had to, you know, whip it into a new box before the new version of the Batmobile was finished. Anyway, this thing is the rarest of the rare because I didn't even know it existed and I was pretty, pretty, as you can tell, a little, I, was in, I was into this stuff, you know. I wanted to be up on my knowledge. There it is. There's the Toys R Us sticker, 1999. There's the water damage on this thing. All of mine are damaged. They're dinged up. I don't know if you can really tell, but they're like, oh, they're not like fine collector quality. That's what helped me get them for so cheap. And I got them bit by bit over a long period of time. So there's something that you're always like, I want to have that collection, but it's too expensive to buy it all. You don't buy it all. The fun of it is trying to find each little piece, you know, a bit at a time, or someone will send you something like somebody will be like, hey, I got one of those Batman VHSs. I found it in my drawer. Do you want it? Yes, I do want it. Thank you. As a matter of fact, this one here, because they're all the same mold, these three Kenner Batmobiles right here, they're all exactly the same, just the packaging is different. This one is sealed, I've never opened it, it's never been opened. This one's also sealed and never been opened as far as I know. This is the one you're actually looking at here because they're all the same. And this one has the copyright date on it. Uh, copyright date of 1990 on it. So they were making these in 19... See, I'm nerdy about this. I'm all into it. Oh, see, they made this in 90, but then they repackaged it in 91 and 92. Dude, it's my favorite movie ever of ever, 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 ever. I got a lot of favorite movies, but still, of ever. They made a lot of modern stuff, right? They've got a Hot Toys, Batman. Hot Toys, if you don't know, is this crazy expensive, crazy detailed line of super, like, adult collectible stuff. I don't have that. Then there's a company called NECA, it's a little more affordable that made this an anniversary Batman. This is actually a Chinese knockoff of that, like a bootleg version. If I shake him, his torso will come detached from his leg. So if you see them on eBay, they're almost always the, the knockoff bootleg version. They still look pretty good, a little derpy, but if you stick them way up on the shelf, you know, it looks pretty good. But other than this, I've tried to keep it all to stuff that I actually had. You know what I mean? I've tried to keep it, or that I wanted, you know, when I was buying this stuff, like as a kid. I mean, don't get me wrong, if somebody sent me the real NECA Batman or the the Hot Toys one, or there's another one that just came out, or the fancy one, I would take it. <laughs> I wouldn't turn it down. But, you know, $200 for something is crazy money to me, so there's no way I'm paying $2,000 for the, the craziest collectibles they have now. Nope, mine is all vintage. It's all been gained a piece at a time. And over the years, I've given a lot of it away to kids, because it'll be like some kid or my kid or my kid's friends are like, oh, that is so cool, I love that. I'll be like, Ah, take it and go play with it. I had another Dark Knight Collection Batmobile in the box back in the day when you could still find them for 90 bucks or 80 bucks, which, believe me, compared to now, was cheap. And I was like, ah, you kids take it and play with it. Of course, they destroyed it and whatever, but they had fun with it, and that was more important to me. So I have a couple of random things, like some Happy Meal toys that people have either, either given me or I've come across over the years, stuff like that. I get it, man. Some of you are thinking, you're crazy. I understand. It's kind of dorky, kind of nerdy, and obviously, if you can see the scattered state of it. I don't even have one spot to display or keep this stuff in. It's all stashed away in weird little spots. So I gathered it all because I told you guys I would share it with you. Sorry it takes so long. It's just something that I'm really... <laughs> Weirdly, I can't help it. I'm just really into it. Oh, I almost forgot to mention with modern stuff that yes, I do have that RC car that we drove off George's car in the, the last video. And I promise now I'm almost done, but I have two more weird things I've got to show you because they're maybe my favorites. One of them is a Batman figure I was told was Peruvian. Okay, 
So this was Peruvian. I think it might actually have been from Argentina or Chile. Most bootleg figures are just taken directly from molds of legit figures, but this one is weird. Look at this. South American Batman here. His cape is kind of shriveled up back there and curled up. His boots are very plain, not very ornate. He's got these weird, like, joints. Like, it seems fairly obvious they had some other kind of figure and then just glued a Batman head on it. Because it looks a lot like the uh, Keaton Dark Knight Collection head. I mean, very similar. Actually, it might even look a little bit better. But the weirdest thing is he's got this holster here. So who knows what it originally came with, but I think this Batman was packing heat, dear. So there's bootleg number one, which I really enjoy. Like, yes, look at this. Saludos, amigos. I've always been jealous of people that have, like, dude, there's some people that have huge 89 Batman collections. Absolutely huge. I was always jealous of some of the weird foreign items or weird bootleg versions they had. So I really liked that one. And I really liked this one as well. At first glance, it looks like it's just, you know, maybe a foreign version, Hungarian actually in particular, of the Toy Biz Batman. But then you look a little closer and you realize like, boy, that was molded pretty bootleggishly. I mean, look at the funky legs on there, you know? Obviously they just copied it straight off the Toy Biz one. And they also apparently photocopied the package as well. Because it looks pretty legit until you lay down the real one. And the real one is like kind of shiny, right? A little bit reflective on there. And it became obvious to me that they just bought one from the United States, right? Look at the hole there. No hole at all right there. So clearly they just bought one of these, opened it up, they took the little bubble off, photocopied the back, and then where the tear was from the glue where they ripped this bubble off, they added this little red bar and made it solid yellow back there instead of this weird like gold pattern, checkered pattern. And then instead of making a bat rope, they just clipped like a, it's hard to see from this packaging, but they just clipped this like little plastic belt to him. And presto changeo, instant Hungarian Batman figure. The weird plastic it's in is just stapled to the back. The staples are actually kind of a little bit rusty back there, and I love that they put this weird, like, Batman drawing in this weird font right there. Instead of, like, the clean version on the real, like, legit, actual Toy Biz one. And they didn't even try to punch the little, the little peg hole on there, they just left it white, like, from the photocopier. I mean, that... I think this is my favorite thing. I think out of all of it, this, this might be my favorite. I love having the Batmobiles. I mean, I feel like I did it, because I got all those Batmobiles over the years. But this... This is funky. This is fantastic. Oh, man. Anyway, now that I have all of this stuff out, you know what I'm going to do next. I'm going to throw on 1989 Tim Burton, Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson, Batman. I know this video was very long. And by the way, yes, I told you I had already snagged another one of these RC cars because I knew we were going to ruin that other one for the video. So I did buy a clean one. I don't know if I said this in the last video, but... We drove it off George's car because it was funnier. Like, oh, big stunts off this little car. What we wanted to do was drive it off like a parking garage or, or a building, but we couldn't find any parking garage or building where where the flat surface would just go straight off. There was always a wall, so we had to fake it and chuck it. I was like, we're not gonna chuck it off the building. Like if it, you know, if I'm driving it off the building, it's a test, it's a fall test. If I'm chucking it off the building, that's just being destructive for no reason. So I got a little bit dinged up. I'm gonna give this to a to a kid and then keep the the fancy version I also got on clearance from Walmart.com for 20 bucks for myself. But this one, I shall be giving away. Oh, and I did actually manage to complete that Bob the Goon painting I was talking to you guys about. So, I got a Joker one in the works. A couple of Batmans that I showed you. I did a couple of Bobs. What can I say? I've just been in a Batman 89 mood, and it's not even Halloween. Maybe it's because, you know, they've been saying that during the pandemic with all this stuff going on, there's a lot of people who... I read this whole article about People who call up their exes or like a high school sweetheart or something and they're they're connecting or people are calling a lot of old friends. I know I've been actually calling a lot of old friends and burying weird hatchets and stuff. But I think my version of that was, I'm going to pull out all my Batman stuff and reconnect with my past that way. I'm not calling up any exes, I'll tell you that much right now. But anyway, it's not the world's biggest collection, certainly, you know. I, I don't even have the bat wings anymore and the packages or the bat caves and there's a lot of... Even Dark Knight Collection stuff I'm missing. There's these weird boxed figures and stuff like that. Well, this has sort of been my secret, like, uh, Batman hoard of stuff that I've had for a while. And 
A couple of times I've mentioned it on the Patreon podcast or I've mentioned it in other videos and I thought finally, you know, we might as well. We all got nothing to do right now. Might as well show you guys the Batman collection. I also actually, sitting over here in the dark, have three Mask of the Phantasm figures. If you've never seen it, it's on Netflix now actually. It's an animated series movie, but unlike just, you know, the animated series itself. I always considered it sort of the third Tim Burton movie in a way. It's got the song, it's just, it sort of jibed with that whole vibe. I mean, the animated series was really good and did also. It's, the animated series is kind of the only thing we got that was sort of a continuation of that darker, weird Batman universe. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I also have this. My mom found this, literally this last week. And see, mom has still got my Batman back. She's really gone to bat for me over the years with the whole Batman thing. She found this on an estate sale. A whole pile of cards and stickers from Batman Returns and that weird sticker book, unused. That's pretty cool. I used to have all the, the tops cards from the first movie, the 89 movie, but no longer. Anyway, I could talk about this stuff forever. I really appreciate you guys looking at this stuff with me and letting me ramble about this stuff. Oh, someday all of this I'm sure I'll give away and then I'll have to start all over again, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe I'll get lucky. I'll be able to hold on to it this time. But if you're ever out at an estate sale and you, you find some, some weird 1989 Batman Hungarian action figures or something, you know, and you don't want them, <laughs> you know where to send them. Anyway, yeah, I appreciate it, guys. I know it's just a movie and I don't know why, but it's a weirdly personal movie for me. I think, like I said, it's the year my grandpa died. It's also kind of the year that I sort of became aware of pop culture. It was the one thing that I actually, it was the first time that I ever had like the cool toys, like the Batmobile and I had the Batman and the Joker and all this stuff for the cool movie at the cool time. Like I finally fit in with the other kids. I knew what was going on, you know, and that's just always been a favorite of mine ever since. Obviously, love a lot of other Batman movies. Not so much the George Clooney one. Oh, I love Val Kilmer, but I'm not sure about that one either. I think the Christopher Nolan Batman movies were absolutely fantastic. I refused to watch Ben Affleck as Batman. I just didn't want to. Nothing. It's nothing personal, Ben. Nothing personal, guys who liked it. Just, eh. I loved the Christopher Nolan Christian Bale Batman movies, love them. But they weren't as collectible feeling to me, so I've stuck with this. Batman 89, I know it's probably not the best ma Batman. I know probably the Dark Knight takes the cake, Heath Ledger, all that. I get it, but it's always gonna be like my Batman. That one feels like it's mine, you know? So I wanted to share that piece of myself with you, I guess is, is what it feels like. And uh, now I feel like uh, I've made a mess. I've done my bat duty. Now it's time to go to my bat cave and sleep well. Now I know everybody on the internet says it when somebody's watching them, but I want to take uh, one more opportunity just really quick here at the end to say from my heart, thank you for watching, for real. Come in with me on Crazy Adventures, all the people that are on Patreon or get sick merch, which by the way, the hats are being restocked and we've got some new pins coming and all that stuff, so I haven't forgotten yet. It's just been, you know, crazy 2020 what are you gonna do i appreciate every single one of you so much leaving positive comments going to instagram all that stuff so there's a bunch of links down below and i will talk more about batman 1989 if you're not completely sick of it yet on the patreon podcast we might even do a little uh little movie commentary maybe i'll do it as a commentary and you can watch the movie along with me but until then i've got to go actually to death valley i don't know which order the videos are going to come out in but we're going to Death Valley in a heat wave. So I either you've already seen that and I survived right on or I didn't make it. Sorry, bye guys. Or something, but it's gonna be a hot day in the old valley tonight, tomorrow. So I've really gotta go and sleep well. So thank you guys once more. I love you all. Tune in next time. Same bad time, same bad channel. And uh, yeah, I'm done.